Today we are going to prove that the center of a connected graph is contained within a single block of that graph. Let's begin by reminding ourselves what these terms mean. First of all, a block in a graph is a maximal non-separable subgraph. Remember that non-separable is also called two connected, which means that it is connected and has no cut vertices. Click here for a video about blocks in a graph or see the links in the description below. Next, let's talk about the center of a graph. Recall that the center is equal to the set of all vertices of the graph whose eccentricity is equal to the radius of that graph. If you would like a review about these terms, check out this video about eccentricity, radius, and diameter, or see the links in the description below. We want to prove the following theorem, that the center of every connected graph lies within a single block of that graph. Before we do the proof, let's start with a small example on six vertices. So here's our example. First, let's find the eccentricity of every vertex, and I'll label those in green. Now let's highlight where the blocks lie. I'm just going to highlight the blocks using red, so now you can see that those are the three blocks of this graph. Now notice something. Where is the center? It's those two blue vertices which have eccentricity equal to two. That's the radius, which is the minimum eccentricity. And those two blue vertices do lie within a single block. So, for an example, it makes sense. Now what we want to do, though, is see how we could prove this theorem in general. We will prove this theorem by contradiction. So we start by supposing that the theorem is false. What this means is that then there exists a connected graph G whose center does not lie within a single block. So G has a cut vertex V such that G without V will have at least two components, G1 and G2, which both contain vertices of the center. Let's draw a picture. We know we have vertex V, and when we remove it, we have some number of connected components. Let's draw those as a bunch of blobs. We also know that two of those blobs, G1 and G2, will contain vertices of the center, so I'll draw those as blobs within those blobs. Now, let U be a vertex in the graph, such that the distance from our vertex V to U is equal to the eccentricity of V and let P be a shortest UV path in the graph, G. At least one of the components, G1 and G2, has no vertices of the path P, let's say G2. This is because if they both had vertices of the path P, then they would be connected by that part of the path and they would not be separate components. That would contradict the fact that they are distinct components. So I'll draw vertex U somewhere with a path P to V. Notice, U could have belonged to component G1, but the proof works out exactly the same. The important thing to keep in mind is that nowhere on P are there vertices in G2. Now, let W be a vertex in G2 and in the center, and let Q be a shortest VW path. Now, P union Q is a UW path which necessarily has length equal to the distance from U to W. This means that P union Q is a shortest path from U to W. This is because P and Q were individually shortest paths and U and W belong to different components of G without V. Remember that U was chosen to be a vertex at maximum distance from vertex V, at eccentricity of V. But clearly, the shortest path from W to U is larger than the path from V to U. That means that the eccentricity of W is larger than the eccentricity of V. But hold on a minute. The eccentricity of W has to be minimum among the whole graph because it belongs to the center. That's a contradiction. With that contradiction, we know that it's not true that our theorem is false. In fact, it is true that the theorem holds. So we put the square and we are done the proof. So now you always know that the center of a connected graph belongs within a single block of that graph. I hope you've had fun with graph theory today. Check out these related videos and I'll see you next time.